And then back to that house at Kent Court, which is in Turak, which is sort of ritzy suburb of Melbourne, which a suburb that people love to hate. Um, but it's an interesting suburb. It does have some fantastic houses, just presumably because it had the wealth or something or enlightened people. And so you have these great Desbro O'Neill houses. Desbro O'Neill is sort of famous Melbourne residential architect and you have them from different areas, eras, so you've got the imperial era, but you've also got his arts and craft area with his signature um, corner window. And then uh, Roy Grounds is famous... His own house. The Hill House, <laughs> which is basically has the sort of round donut hollowed out of it, which is, became the prototype for the um, National Gallery. And then other houses like the one, which is a sort of very elegant wedge um, house he did in a court. A lot of them are very small, particularly the modernist ones. And on the left here, there was a um, Guildford Bell house, I think, which is, was ripped down. This is what's happening. Basically, they're all getting ripped down. and then these Custard boxes are appearing. Custard boxes are appearing. So we sort of thought this is sort of an antidote to the custard box. And also another go at trying to do perhaps the glass house. So we sort of started with this sort of Farnsworth type plan. And as we tried to sort of work in the shape of the site, which was quite difficult to work in, um, the thing became gradually more distorted. As we tried to think of the whole site as being the sort of garden and tried to deal with that sort of sense of orientation. And so on the bottom you can see the sort of ground plan with sort of glass house, with central core, and then because it was for a family, Farnsworth house wasn't for a family, um, we had to think about how you occupy the bedrooms and how other people live in it, so we thought of the sort of reverse, so the courtyard house was inserted on top so that has a sort of courtyard in the middle, which allows light back into that central core at the bottom, but also overcomes problems of overlooking that you get in those denser suburbs. And then looked at sort of pulling up and down the facade uh, to basically contain, contain view or light. And also the ceiling. So even the client came along, you know, when we were building and, you know, you could just pull a string line if he felt slightly uncomfortable with where the ceiling was. Yeah, so the client, because it was all set up with string lines, he had this ability to be able to kind of, in some respects, shape his environment, which was quite nice. And so it took on this sort of cave-like um, sense, of sort of this giant monolith floating over the landscape. In this house, we designed everything, light fittings and all sorts of things. Screens, <laughs> glass screens. So the courtyards, and so the, on the top, the courtyards are the courtyards in the middle. You can see the skylights down into the core below, and the bathrooms are pushed to the outside. And there's sort of one window. It's a poor, suffering builder. <laughs>